Welcome. My name is Jason Hodges. I'm the Executive Director at the Anchorage Concert Association. And on behalf of the board, the staff, and the volunteers, I want to welcome you to Anchorage Concert Association's Community Artists Projects featuring MC Mahogany Magnetic. Today we gather in our community across the state and perhaps even across the globe. I'm not coming to you from the stages of the Performing Arts Center. I'm coming to you from my living room in Anchorage, Alaska, on the lands of the Denina Athabascan people of Alaska. Like many of you, this pandemic has forced us all to innovate and improvise our way through it. Ordinarily, the Concert Association brings artists from across the globe together with you in the stages of the Performing Arts Center. But this pandemic has made that all but impossible. So we have taken this opportunity as a time to focus and shine a light on the artists in our own community who are doing amazing work, and there are many. And we've asked these artists to focus on community, to heal community, and make it generally a better place. And that is how and why that we have created the Anchorage Concert Association's Community Artist Projects. We have partnered together with four artists to explore ways of connecting community during this pandemic. And you can find out more information on this great program at anchorageconcerts.org. Today, as we gather, we are presenting the culmination of Mahogany Magnetic's project, The Quarantine Sister Circle. This project explores a brand new work, is a hosted conversation with both cast and crew that looks to encourage empathy and compassion. The virtual performance will be followed by a moderated Q&A with Mahogany and the show's artists. We hope that you will join us for that. In the meantime, all we want more than anything is to gather together again in the Performing Arts Center to put on live performing arts. But before we can do that, what we ask you to do is to follow the community health guidelines. Wear a mask, wash your hands, and stay six feet apart. And when your time comes to get a vaccine, please do so. Because then and only then will we be able to get back together at the Performing Arts Center to sit shoulder to shoulder, to clap and laugh together and experience live performing arts. And I hope that we can do that again very soon. In the meantime, we have this amazing virtual space which has connected us in oh so many ways. And it is my great pleasure to hand this virtual space over to MC Mahogany Magnetic. It's not cheaper to keep her. I'm a bad mama seat to magnetic radiation going off in your speaker like what? Too many kids, so I'm not gonna cuss. My poetics originate from dark matter. I leave every open mic covered in blood splatter. Time out, hold up. Let me turn up the sauna, bacon cakes. I got the sweetness, so call me sugar mama. My lyrics are jelly, so that's why they jam. I'm your host is doing the most of making poetry slam. Back up, back up. Give me 50 feet. I'm on the mic to make the cipher complete. Your favorite poetess. Spitting a verse, even if a rhyme slow, put the gear in reverse. Your girl over here sparking up mad isms. That's right. You heard me. A cataclysm, an explosion, if you will. So let go and act ill with mahogany. Yes, just like the tree. Magnetic as in magnetically. With that bagua style kung fu. MC for dropping mad clues. So the ball is in your court. What you gonna do next? I done showed you my good side and I'm still vexed. There's nothing wrong. You can't fix me. I'm a lady, but still rip off my clothes like Bill Bixby. Then turn all sexy green on your ass. It's like she all smash. And your entire paradigm has been terror transformed. Game over. Magnetic wins. Insert coin. <laughs> all right on. Thank you all and welcome you to the Sunday matinee, uh, the final show for color ladies who have considered pool tabs as their last $2 a choreo poem, and when a choreo poem is a merger of poetry and dance, and we have just a wonderful presentation, wonderful film for you all from, straight from the Quarantine Sister Circle here in Anchorage, Alaska. The last four weeks has been a part of this community artist project with the uh, Anchorage Concert Association. So we've just been getting together every Sunday, you know, just hanging out and continuing to work through this script and develop this uh, presentation, this film, and this panel discussion for you all. I'm just so delighted to be here. This is such a beautiful, such an honor, blessing. So anyways, we're just about to get into it and have some fun. So you just sit back, enjoy your Sunday afternoon. And um, yeah, so see you shortly after these messages.
These last two lovers I'm not gonna lose These last two lovers I'm not gonna lose One's gone for the bus fare Other one for the jukebox I gotta hear me some I failed to put on lotion before going to bed, so I was a ghost in my own dreams last night. I woke up privileged as all get out, breakfast in bed, presented in sterling silver trays. I ate eggs benedict with hollandaise sauce, leaving me with a sigh of arrival. Pat the child on the head, kiss bay on the lips, then drove to work as a long commuter in the HOV lane. My own parking space. No waiting in line for coffee. I even won a game of rock, paper, scissors against my colleague. Undeniable. The good life. No one contended with anything I had to say in the morning staff meeting. The boss man praised my work. I felt my high level of private education finally pay and reward me with a plaque. Employee of the year for the third year in a row. Doors were open to me while roses showered my feet. Adorned, I could do no wrong. I drove home five miles under the speed limit and soon saw flashing blue and red lights. The siren overpowered my custom audio system speakers, so I pulled over. What's the problem, officer? My license and registrations were ripped apart by the hands of the officer. I was dragged. The shit kicked out of me. My head slammed. Blood from the depths of my gut splat, splattered on the side of the one-way dark road. Blackout. Wake up in a cell with a bunch of fugly mofos staring hard at fresh meat. I am a brand new member of the yo ass in jail on a holiday, so don't think about getting out to Tuesday Club. Oh shit, what was I to do? My story was unbelievable. Speed laws don't apply to the rich and famous. Furthermore, Beyonce is my second cousin on my baby mama's side. I'm a card-carrying member of the NRA, and yes, I voted for the president, so why the, all the animosity? I don't understand. Bailed out on my own recognizance. Before the sun rose on Saturday, I showed those fugly mofos back in that cell that money talks. I rode the bus downtown to the car impound. My eyes were still swollen, but I searched for the date and the year in the newspaper. Hopefully it was 2021 and not 1954. How can the police officer kick my ass like that? I donate yearly a substantial amount of money to the police union. I pay taxes. I have a MAGA ball cap for every day of the week. God bless America and no place else. How could this happen to me? To me? The lady on my left kept shoving me with her elbow to get my attention. Both of your eyes are damn near closed shut. You are blind trying to read. Look, lady, I'm just trying to pass as a normal citizen riding the public transportation system. Well, ain't that the truth? You are definitely passing for stuck on stupid. <sighs> oh, good. She got off at the next stop and left me to my own business. Home and fresh out of jail in my own neighborhood to find my friends judging me with icy eyes of disdain. Really? What did I do now? Where did I go wrong? 
I know I didn't brush my teeth, but I wore the same tailored suit I wore the day before I drove away in my luxury car. So what was so different about this walk from my driveway to my door? The child ran off weeping and Babe couldn't look at me direct. You, you charlatan. What? Imposter. Fake. Phony. Fraud. I hear it all echoing twice from our dining room walls, yet I still could not understand the, what the ruckus was all about. They just got to get over it. A needed break, so I propped my feet on the bottom rung of the coffee table to contemplate my woes until my quietness was shattered by the sound of crashing broken glass from somewhere in the back of my house. A gunshot, then two, three, I, I don't know. I counted nine before I heard the action of a shotgun. Like Breonna Taylor, they never announced themselves, yet tightened the lock of the handcuffs with a tiny key. My attorney argued mistaken identity. The judge rejected my police brutality claim. Out on bail back home to feel hot summer air whistle across shards of the broken glass in the back door. They and the child fled to the grandparents' house in the next town for safety, alone. Bored as fuck, I decided to run no longer than my ankle bracelet timer allowed me to be away from my home. Monitored. House arrest. Gone like a streak of thunderstorm lightning, I was off to the races in my own zone to clear my mind. A loose pack of hunting dogs gave chase to my heels. <laughs> Through the woods when night falls, I'm lost, but I feel the moss side of the trees, and I look to the North Star to guide me to freedom. I outran the dogs, but not the mob of angered citizens on patrol. They said I fit the description of a burglar. But, but you know me. I attend the neighborhood association meetings regularly. Your children play with my child. We had Thanksgiving together. Don't you remember the fruitcake I gave you for Christmas? A stunch now followed by roping my ankles, my wrist bound behind my back. They hoisted my body to a strong tree that held my weight and cinched a savory noose around my, my neck with no explanation as to why the bonfire grew hotter and hotter under my feet, engulfing me in flames, too exhilarating to maintain consciousness, exfiliation in my, my last breath, and I, I died. At heaven's pearly gates, I stood in a long line, but I knew I didn't belong there. So I shuffled over to the shorter line, designated by the hanging sign, whites only, as if dirty laundry sorted on color and not on funk. My turn, front of the line. No, nope, no go, amigo. Your name is not on this list. Didn't you read the sign? There's no place for you here because, well, honestly, to be frank with you. What do you mean? Be frank with me. I mean, you are not the right color for heaven. What? You mean I'm not white? Exactly. But my life, my entire life, I thought I was white. How come no one told me I was a nigga? I ask myself sitting in the colored only section of the balcony looking down on another soul who never awakened from a dream because they didn't put lotion on before going to bed. See, that's where I went wrong. If I had put lotion on, I would have known I could get my ass kicked, tossed in jail, and charged with DWB, driving while black. If I had used a few dabs of shea butter on my elbows and my knees, I wouldn't have been gone down for being black in my own house. If only I had applied lotion to my black skin, I wouldn't have been a ghost, lost and confused as to why they beat me, shot me, hung me, burned me, lynched me. Damn, I believed I was white. And all I really had to do was put on lotion and stay black and die. So you best believe when I woke up for real, 
I put on lotion, cocoa butter, baby oil, shea butter, and Crisco to make sure I wasn't even ever going to be confused as ever, ever being ashy again. not been on my side for quite some time now but everything is on the up and up now two nights ago i caught the bus to the pool tabs open mic at the bar down the street from my house yep the one with the jukebox in the corner lately i haven't been able to win for losing but i messed around and won three dollars the other night However, a lady at the pool tab lost all her money and was feeling the blues. On stage, the lady in pink didn't just sing, she sang. Every year, Crunching numbers in November. Let's have a moment of silence to remember the fallen. If there's no great pretender, we know it was murder for being transgender. Stabbed, shot, and strangled. 
The police aren't working any angles. There's no justice and definitely no peace. <laughs> Maybe in the afterlife for the deceased. A safer place to be who you are, my friend. I hope you don't have to travel far for freedom, equality and respect. Now don't forget, the young people on the side, over there quietly contemplating suicide. Oh, the reality. Did you miss it? Or do I need to break out the statistics? Unemployment, no health care, and the highest murder rate. It's clear gender nonconforming people can't get a fair shake. With blunt force trauma to our head. Tossed in a river, sexually assaulted, and left for dead. We need to take a stand and fight back. Extract some DNA during the attack. We don't need any more victims. We're all just trying to make a living. The lady at the pool tabs who lost all her money was not in the mood for somber poetics and demanded a change of pace from the bartender who ignored her request and allowed the free flowing session to commence. The lady in purple hoped encouragement would soothe the loser. Girlfriend, sister, girl, or should I say queen, you reach, accomplish, and live the dream. You have the youth of fine wine and inspire the most creative rhymes. I'm so happy we are tighter than micro braids and never apologize for how we misbehave. Besides, nice girls never make history. But you and me, we wrote the book on victory. Laughter for hours on the phone is our weekly custom. Along with telling folks we are BFF sisters or cousins, we just have so much in common. If in grade school the principal was summoned, our crazy behinds every day for being in class and talking anyway, thick as thieves, partners in crime. Like car seats, we get each other's back all the time. I respect the joy, encouragement, and love you bring around. Girlfriend, sister girl, you no longer need a tiara, you deserve a crown. Accompanied by honorific poetry. I don't care what they say, you are queen to me. I must say, that lady in purple was somewhat impressive. Had me feeling like a queen my damn self. A lady at the pool tab lost all her money and wasn't feeling anything like a queen. So the lady in black decided to get on the mic and read a dadgum eulogy. I'm so tired of my people dying, all the mourning, pain, and crying. Woman, hold up. Let me catch my breath before I say goodbye to the last death. They say life is short, but I think it's hella long. A lot of times standing at wakes being strong. I wish it could all be so simple. But I'm 44 and still getting pimples. From toxicity and stress in the air, even the children know how to spell despair. Broken families drawn in their coloring books while adults peek into caskets for one last look at the face of their beloved. Take that see you next lifetime shit and shove it.
where the sun doesn't shine, too many deceased are blowing my mind. First, there was my brother from another, my big mama, then my sister in the struggle, then little red, my big cousin. Got me acting a fool, showing out and cussing. Now you tell me my Kung Fu master is dead. And of course, I can't get the last murder Negro out of my head. I should take a page from my aunt and keep a black dress in my trunk, along with a pair of dress shoes, so I'm ready to meet the bearer of bad news. And the fallout is always some drama. Lord, help me if something happens to my mama. I just might turn loose and unglued. Treat people nasty, acting all kinds of rude. Seriously, I got a broken heart. Still mourning Sandra Bland in the dark. Can we all just get along like Rodney King? Praying for my voice so I can sing. Praises for some wonderful people in their Sunday best looking all regal for the last time before the dirt is shoveled to cover the hurt, leaving family, friends, and concerned citizens to write obituaries and make decisions. For the last time before the dirt is shoveled to cover the hurt, leaving family, friends, and concerned citizens to write obituaries and make decisions in honor of all my people that died. Oh, how I miss you. Oh, how I've cried. The colored ladies clapped and cheered, but a lady at the pool tabs lost all her money. The eulogy only dampened her already gloomy day. All the colored ladies except me invited her to the stage with open arms to tell her story so they could see how they could be of more help. The lady at the pool tabs who lost all her money Clutch the microphone to speak her blues. I lost all my money tonight, and I wouldn't be here if my man treated me right. The son of a bitch took me to court today to make sure I surely pay. The judge dared to ask if my house is a hot mess. Well, of course I said yes. He doesn't work, and he uses my mailing address. <laughs> he uh, gets online spreading rumors and then dares to say I lack a sense of humor. <laughs> Rent is due the first of every month, but mind you, not a single penny from this stunts. He's a lazy bastard, a slimy slob. <laughs> but, but, your honor, the reason why I don't have a job is because what happens is I don't get paid. Every time I go for an interview, I get chased away with a can of raid. Well, I told the judge about his insect friends eating and drinking in my kitchen they spend. I told the judge, I've had it up to here. Just Friday, Mr. Roach in my kitchen drinking my last beer. And so because I called the exterminator on his sorry ass, he showed up in a full body cast. The judge ruled in his favor, of course, based on his full-headed fable. And that's why I'm here at the pull tabs table. I appreciate you colored ladies. Truly, y'all keep me from going stone cold crazy. Social invites so few so far who dare to approaches when everybody thinks I live with roaches. A lady at the pool tabs lost all her money and garnered support from the other colored ladies who had nasty homes as well and related to her blues. They walked around the bar with their hands out until they came around my way, begging for a donation for the nasty woman who lives with roaches and lost all her money. I seized my last two dollars in the palm of one hand while the lady in orange got up there and commanded the mic. 
So yeah, that's right. I'm not sorry, my friend. Your mom is drinking the Kool-Aid again with the new hairdo and fabulous looks while hijacking food stamp books. Not in need of any government assistance, just straight abandon the resistance. I remember back in the day she held a protest sign. Nowadays she's living high and mighty on luscious wine. Hanging out at the Rotary Club and PTA, pretending to be straight when everything about her is gay. And now you know mahogany is no roommate and there never was a hot man date. But that's not all your mom's got going on. I listen to every word of her song. She volunteered to be the first to build the president's wall. She never fell from grace. It was Humpty Dumpty's fall. All the queen's woman didn't do a damn thing to put her fractured soul back together again. Do you even know the flavor she was drinking or what the hell she was thinking? Even the boogie can't be blamed for this. I'm sorry, my friend, but your mom is a hot mess. After the lady in orange broke it all the way down until it was forever broken, I inserted two quarters in the jukebox for some Johnny Taylor down home blues. But the lady at pool tabs who lost all her money waited for me to have a change of heart, but all she got was a soda water from the lady in blue who said. Now look here, colored lady. I ain't getting any younger. I'm the kind of woman that doesn't donate to child hunger. I don't give a hoot about the March of Dimes or breast cancer awareness. No disrespect, but in all realness, I don't buy green bananas because I don't have that kind of time. I don't feel sorry for you because these last two dollars are all mine. And I'm not going to lose. One's going for my bus fare and the other for the jukebox to hear me some blues. I don't know about you, but I count these last two dollars as a blessing. And from watching you all night, I have learned my lesson. So please, colored lady, have a Coke, a smile, and shut the fuck up. My song is playing, and I'm riding high on Lady Luck. My skin is black My arms are long My hair is woolly My back is strong Strong enough to take
my manner is tough I feel the first mother I see My life has been a rough And I'm awfully bitter these days Because my parents were saved Good times, good times. Oh my goodness, thank you all for like you know hanging in here with us and and spending some time. And I hope you enjoy for colored ladies who consider pool tabs with their last two dollars. Yeah, and I must say, I want to thank you all for doing a lady a favor and loaning me two dollars to end the Black History Month. You know what I'm saying? That's what we don't get paid to end the Black History Month these days, but totally wonderful experience. The quarantine sister circle rocks the world. We just had a great time putting this together. And I think it shows, you know what I'm saying? The love, the compassion, the empathy, the ensemble and the cast, but we're going to get into that. So right now I want to bring up Vivian Mel. And I must say that Vivian, I just found this out of whatever, but her first, you know, her director debut, debut was also the, well, the original into Jackie Sean Gay's work for Colored Girls to Consider Suicide When the Rainbow is Enough. So this is just really a beautiful blessing. My directorial debut and hers, like, with the same work, in a sense, you know? So give it up for Vivian, y'all. Oh, what a wonderful show, Mahogany. Oh, I, I I actually dug into my scrapbook just to find out the year that I actually directed this at Cyrano's. Um, Jerry Harper approached me in 1994. Wow. So almost 30 years ago um, to direct. It, it was actually a Black Dog production, Black Dog Theater production. Earl Smith uh, was the artistic director, and it was his 
his um, idea to bring that show to Cyrano's. Mm. Um, and that was the start of, of um, I had been doing theater and dance for, for many years, but that was the start of uh, my entree into directing shows uh, for stage as well. So I, I think it's just a beautiful, um, your, your production, really kind of takes from this whole idea of storytelling and choreo poems with, uh, you know, doing, doing and expressing with movement as well as with your words. And it was done quite well. Robert. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much, y'all. Yeah, so Viv we got panelists up uh, here on the screen. So you get to meet the yellow lady dancer, the or vocalist, our assistant director, Nikki. I'm going to uh, get Annis and I set up here while y'all get the talking. Come over, come over. One more, one more. Okay. Here I am. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello. 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 While we're doing that, I, I would just love to um, hear from the cast members and the other folks that are associated of uh, what your personal experience was in, in be being part of the show and what you gained from this. All right, so my name is Bonnie and I was the yellow dancer and I've had experience doing dancing to spoken word in the past. And every time that's occurred, it's an energy exchange between the dancer and the actress speaking. speaking. And in this case, there was a slight challenge because we were not in the same space when we were creating the work. Um, so we had to rise above some challenges in this case. And um, I think in that aspect, it made the connection between the cast members is so much more important so we could uh, create this beautiful work and bring Mahogany's vision to life. Anyone else, Kasha? Yeah, I'll kind of piggyback on top of that. Um, it was kind of an interesting exchange to, uh, you know, as dancers, we're kind of already used to using music to convey a story and essentially be visual interpreters of uh, the narrative that is being given. Um, but since there was um, kind of, yeah, that, that gap of being able to communicate with um, essentially the orators of, of the, and the narrators of the story, that connection between us became um, became that, and so the the energy was more felt through like our exchange through movement and 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 and, um, and how we were going to convey something that we've never heard. So that was kind of a unique um, experience because we didn't hear their voices um, uh, for certain sections, and so it was kind of us just really kind of lending ourselves to the words and becoming instruments of the words. That's what I love most about the uh, the choreography. And that's like when I was sitting there, like you know, getting the film together and putting composing everything. I was like, "Oh my goodness, this is like spot on." I said, "The reason why it's spot on is because no, they didn't have the recordings like we had, we planned. That some of them they time they had the recording, some didn't, but they had the text right. They had the script, and so they developed the choreography based on that script. So." When I went in and like was matching up the, the visuals um, of the, the speaker, poets, actresses, and the dancers, it's like, oh my gosh, that's perfect. So it's like the gestures, body gestures that go well with the with the words because they followed the script, even in the dance. So that's really beautiful. I was just so pleased with that. I think that also speaks to the writing itself with your own rhythms within the text and the writing. Um, actually does lend a, a, a rhythm to the movement, which uh, was so beautifully done. So we have Anne is here. I don't, we didn't have a, she's the yellow lady uh, actress. Uh, mm -hmm. So she's she's in the wheelchair bound. That's part of the reason why I was like, I gotta get my friend in there. Cause you know, we need representation with people with physical disabilities. And she's my neighbor, quarantine partner. So we've been having a good time <laughs> in quarantine, yeah. getting in all kinds of good trouble with these projects of mine. Right. But um, so Anna, you know, you want to like chime in on it? Yeah. Remember, look there at the camera. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, it was uh, to say it was a new experience for me um, would be an understatement, but and it was a challenge. 
but I loved the collaboration between everybody. And I always tell Mahogany that words have energy and how they're interpreted by people. We could have a completely different set of women and it wouldn't, it wouldn't turn out the same. So to see the finished product and to see those words communicated, not just in movement, but to see people turn it into their vision of what they see and what they hear and, you know, what they want the, the whole vision to be, the completed picture, I, I, get, I get goosebumps every time I watch it. So I'm, I'm just grateful and, and really proud of what we did. And I hope everybody feels the same way. She only get goosebumps because of the cockroach. No! <laughs> Janice, I'm right with you. I was like not feeling that roach when I saw that clip. I was like, anyway. But Annis and Mahogany is that's how I met the two of you was when we were both in the cast of Vagina Monologues. Oh yeah. Standing together against rape. So Nikki, as the assistant director, what what uh what was your role as far as collaborating and, and actually being the conductor of some of this uh, beautiful work? Uh, well, my role was basically like, as you say, assistant. So it's kind of like Mahogany's minion. <laughs> oh, <come on. laughs> That's such a good word. <laughs> so um, basically I just kind of got in where I fit in. I kind of just helped wherever needed. Um, like at one point I was like the pink lady and the purple lady <laughs> and then like doing the administration and, you know, I just kind of just helped wherever we needed stuff to be done. That's where I was doing. Um, but I do have to say like, this was definitely a different experience for me. And I was like, I, I kind of told Mahogany at the beginning, I was like, I had never heard of a choreo poem. I thought it was a term that she had made up, but she was like, no, <laughs> this is this, this is something based off an original act, you know? So it was something new for me. And then um, just being able to um, pull everybody together during like, during this um, quarantine time and having to be, get the, like we never actually met in person and be able to pull everybody together and, come out with a great product um, that's meaningful and creative. It, it was really awesome. And it's a blessing to be able to do that. Heidi, you did the music. What do you, what would you like to say about uh, being a part of this? So I came in kind of at the last minute and I mean, I was just so honored to be asked. And I mean, such important songs and yeah. Um, my role was a little bit different, you know, because I'm not saying I'm just the music, but everybody else was a little more interactive. But I just feel so like privileged and honored to have been a part of this work with such great artists and great people. Really a blessing, really, really an honor. I, I uh, uh, actually, the, the last song, the Nina Simone song, I, I remember, I think it was uh, Sweet Honey on the Rock. There's a version that I saw performed that was so magical. And when I heard it again at the end of the show, it, uh, I, I, you know, with Nina Simone, it, it had to have been written many years ago. I don't even know what year it was composed, but um, it's as in the music uh, or as in the show that you've pulled together mahogany and um, in looking at uh, an article uh, based on the play that I directed, the issues are still there and the struggle is still mm -hmm. there. And, and it's, 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 it's like um, I, I um, the Color Girls play or choreo poem was written back in 1974. Mm -hmm. And then I did that show 20 years later and here we are almost 30 years later and we're still singing the same songs and, yep. and you know, fighting the same fight. Um, and, um, but then through your perspective, Mahogany, um, why don't you speak to um, the, the choice of, of what you've uh, put into this piece? 
Um, I've read some of your poems in the, in the Shiro uh, book. Oh um, my gosh! Yeah, you I in. Yes, I was one of the one of the people that bought your book. <laughs> I'm yeah. one of your great fans. So um, anyway, uh, why don't you speak to your work? Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, so the Every Good Shiro, I published that like last year on my birthday, and it's just been up there. Like I don't even know how much money I made if I made any, but. It's there. And I'm so happy to hear someone like <laughs> talk about it. <laughs> so I need to do a better job of promoting some of the things I do. But with this work, with this Corey poem, um, it was, I, I, for a long time as a writer, as a poet, I didn't understand why it would take poets so long, like 20 years to write a poem. But then I have learned like, um, as life goes on, you come back to pieces, right? You know, you keep your journals and you go back to them and you look at them and you feel different. You look at them differently. So in 2018, I had an um, at UAA to um, go back and reread a work I hadn't read in a long time. So I'll go back and read for colored girls who consider suicide when the rainbow is enough. And at the end of that, Intizaki Shange asked the readers to write their own choreo poem. So I was like, okay, cool. Let me give this a chance. And so I, I started putting the pieces together and I noticed that the voices and, and the, the poems, because Heidi and I talk about this all the time because she'd be helping me with the poetry session. She's one of our honorable judges. But the um, the speaker of a poem, the narrator poem is a lot different. It's not the same as the writer. And oftentimes you know, people confuse the, the two. But so I noticed that each of these narrators and speakers in this poem were totally different characters. Oh, yeah, I can totally make this choreo poem happen, right? And so it wasn't until this past November I submitted an excerpt for it for Alaska Writers Guild for a poetry contest, and I took second place, right? And so my friends like, oh, right on, mahogany, you know what I'm saying? Mahogany, boom, I, yeah. You know, and I'm like, okay, so it's like, what you going to do next? What you going to do next? And then this idea that... The, um, with the Anchorage Concert Association, this opportunity came up. So I submitted the proposal for the Quarantine Sister Circle and that uh, we was going to do this choreo poem as a part of our project as we move along the pandemic because the idea was to give us something to do here. And it had to be something fast, quick. It also had to be something that was like, you know, stick to social distancing, you know, the rules. So um, this is the, the project that we did. But, you know, the choreo poem wasn't nothing without the dancers, right? Because I just had the text as one half of it. So to, to have that, that component there was like, oh, now it's a choreo poem. Because before, you know, there was dance and movement involved. It was just a book of poetry, you know what I'm saying? A, a collection of poems. But they totally brought it to, to life. And I'm just so thrilled about, you know, watching this project again and again, like, I see things, you know, even though you spend hours looking at stuff when you're like editing and creating these films and stuff, you spend hours looking at it, but I see things I hadn't seen before. I finally figured out what Tavy was cooking in the oven. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my goodness. But yeah, it's, it's good stuff. All right. Any, any um, thought to what might come about with this? Um, in a different world with uh with the the potential for for you to actually do this as a stage piece one of these days when we can yeah i know <laughs> I, 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 believe it, I believe it's going to happen and the reason why i believe it's happened because we've had quite a bit of success this past week this weekend i mean you know coming in today we was like hitting around 1600 views you know so, so we're definitely going to break 2k right and if you put that in the context, if we were actually in theater, in a place or whatever, we, we, we would, we would um, sell out the second largest you know, space in the performing arts theater. You know what I'm saying? We, we've shown and proven that um, we can carry you know, a crowd. We can bring, we can draw an audience. So, and then you know, with this, the, the, the Corey poem itself and the style, it's, it's just so free for you know, artistic expression for other places, other stages. And I, gosh, I, you know, I'm just praying for the day. I'm like laying here one day and somebody called me on the other side of the world. I was like, oh, Mo, we want to do this Corey poem with you. I was like, gosh, I was about to start cussing again. But heck yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> heck yeah. You know, let's do it. Let's do the darn thing. 
You know, so I told you, Anna's be having me cussing on Sunday. Yeah, I'm trying not to cuss me. on Sunday. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we gonna uh, this. I know, I know it. I know without a doubt, we're gonna see this again uh, here in Anchorage. And you know, and that's the one thing about me. And like, no matter what, like if if it don't if you don't give me a stage, we'll go create our stage. We'll make this happen. The community will make this happen again. You know what I'm saying? And I was thinking like, yo, we could do this this summer. You know what I'm saying? We spread out or whatever and really have a social distancing thing. And I think that's also a very interesting part of this entire art piece, right? There was, no one else may have this opportunity again. You have dancers with masks on. You have this social distancing project. That's a part of this artwork right here that we're in right now. This, this whole thing that won't be there when the pandemic is over. Right. So this, this experience that we're having is a beautiful, one-of-a-kind experience. It is like groundbreaking and we we're, we're moving up like elevators and hot air balloons. But yeah, let's some of the, the cast and the directors, let's see what they got to say. Yeah. Anyone? I don't know. <laughs> um, it's interesting that Mahogany has mentioned things like limitations as far as um, uh, the things that kind of hindered us uh, like masks, like we, uh, as dancers, we're so used to emoting um, our expression through our facials. I mean, we talk, we speak a big deal to that um, um, with Sankofa. Uh, when we talk to the kids, it's like, you know, it's, it's more than just the movement, it's the feeling. And so usually you're able to connect that with uh, facial expressions and eye contact. And so you're already dealing with a virtual experience. And so you're re you've removed the audience in the sense of being able to connect that way. And then you've also removed half of your face <laughs> um, <laughs> being covered in a mask. And, uh, and so the challenge then became making sure that Mahogany's words weren't just flat, that you had to carry them and mm -hmm. elevate them beyond just the movement you may have normally have given. And then also trust within your own ability to emote that without the facials to do that. So it was kind of an interesting challenge. And I, I, I know for myself, I know I elevated a bit as a dancer and even just as a creative and um, even as a director here at Wix Sankofa, um, it, it, you know, just with the projects and the things that we could do and, you know, we, we can expand to because we can give the audience a chance to kind of really intake us in, in a space that they're comfortable in too. You know, I think a lot of it is we, we can uh, speak to sometimes the theater is intimidating, um, mm -hmm. especially when you're talking about uh, people of color coming into the theater. And if, if that, if that Avenue hasn't been accepting necessarily of the culture, you're not going to pull them in necessarily. Right. So we've actually kind of bridged a gap in being able to, yeah. put the art out there, elevate that voice. And, um, and then the concert association can see, Hey, this, there's viability in that. So then as those restrictions become um, lifted, we can then move forward with that understanding in that. So. And I think another important thing, Vivian is, and, and Mahogany's mentioned this a couple of times. There's, there's so many people out there that just let the, uh, pandemic just stopped them from doing anything. And this, you know, they've stopped creating, they've stopped interacting, they've stopped just about everything. And this kind of proves that you can come together and you can create and you can communicate and you can still live your life and do things that are important. And you can use the, uh, what would be the word? that what we've used the the internet and the you know coming together with the anchorage concert association and you can make things happen it didn't stop anybody from doing anything you just have to find a different way and hopefully this has shown people that it inspires other people to do things and get back to living their lives and not getting so lost in the negative side of the pandemic mm -hmm. you know and i hopefully this sends that message too because that's part of what we're trying to do. Um, do any of the other performers uh, want to speak to that? Because I, I, I see one um, comment in here, uh, unless someone wants to speak first. I'll go ahead and, okay. Well, I just wanted to piggyback, piggyback off of Anna's saying, you know, um, this whole quarantine brought a whole 
another game. I mean, it's like a game just because it looks different doesn't mean it's bad. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just what we got to figure out is like, how do we make this happen with it looking different? And how do we embrace that and just elevate it up to the next level? So that's what this project was for me. Okay, um, there is a, uh, someone said, can each person, oh yeah, uh, can each person speak to their own personal desire for social justice in 2021 and how the past year reflects for each du during or creating this performance? We've kind of reached that, but um, uh, it, it, does the question uh, generate any more thoughts on that? Um, one, one of the things that people didn't know, um, and we, I think we kind of touched on it a little bit, but, um, our cast is, a, like completely diverse. We have people from all different backgrounds. We've got different races. We got different, um, physical disabilities. We have people from different socioeconomical backgrounds. We have people different ages. So be able to bring all those people together and create something this beautiful, it's 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 amazing. And do it like during this pandemic is even more just and more impressive. We even had a pregnant lady too. Yeah, uh -huh. we do. The yes, uh, purple yeah. lady, yes. <laughs> purple lady. <laughs> purple lady. Oh my goodness. Well, you 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 just you know having the diversity is is the rainbow. <laughs> yes. Well, we have a little bit of everything. <laughs> Well, I'm also struck that um, this work is also very much a community building piece where we have pulled people from the community from different, um, even though we have dancers and actors, we have people from the uh, um, community reflective of what our community is. You know, we, we have a very diverse community here in Anchorage and the fact that you are creating together um, and um, finding ways to make it happen is, um, you know, I applaud you all for it. You know what, in addition to, to talking about community, like these are my friends, like we be kicking it. Like mm -hmm. Kash and I have a daughter who was like kicking it just like a few months ago, you know what I'm saying? There's a few people I had met before, but you know, Heidi, Nikki, and, you know what I'm saying? Titanic Anderson, we, you know what I'm saying? We go back like car seats. So it's just like, just fun. Just like, just to make art yeah, with my friends. Goodness. It's like, it don't get no better than that. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's one thing to have friends. You just sit around like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But when you like get together, you like, you know, say so you make an art project, you know, just something beautiful like this. It's like, yeah, it's real, real it builds real um, community and friendships, right? And so one of the things I've been hearing too from some of the cast members of the quarantine sister circles. Oh yeah, I got such and such email. They got my phone number and stuff. So relationships have been built, you know, and, and, and you know have created and stuff that wasn't there before. Right. And some of the other um, cast members, I think Maya, the um, pink dancer, was saying the uh, pink lady dancer was saying that you know she had like this is an opportunity to meet people because during the pandemic, the only people you really know are the people you already know. Like you know, saying just like. And it's not like other than that, like everybody else is strangers. So this is like gave us, you know, opportunity to meet new people and, and to, to, yeah, and to build community. Yeah. Just, okay. I feel like I'm talking too much. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I think Anna spoke to it earlier that if we had completely different cast, this would have been a completely different piece of work because every single person involved in this creation brought a piece of themselves and their experiences into the work. Um, we just took Mahogany's words and we just put our own lens on it. Mm -hmm. um, so this is just a little bit of all of us to create this and it could have ended up totally different. <laughs> What is this question? I really can't see it. Okay, there's a question. Do you find the art of poetry to be of help in unifying others into one community for social justice and um, uh, togetherness? Personally, I found myself reading from all sorts of backgrounds. I find the feelings being express, expressed, highlighting even past thoughts and feelings. Well, thank you. Thank you for, for asking that question. And um, this, this is something I haven't, had much opportunity to talk about, 
So when um, I'm like 45, I just turned 45. But in my early 20s, I met an elder when I was in Houston, um, when I was you know doing activist work and it was social justice stuff then. But Mother Jean uh, Wilkins Denver used to say poetry is therapeutic. And you would see this lady. I mean, and at the time she was like 60, 70 years old or something. Whatever. She did the protest. She got all these buttons on her hat. But she always carried this clipboard with her. And every opportunity she got, you know, said she would talk about mental health and well-being. And she would talk about, you know, poetry. And she always said poetry is therapeutic. And so throughout the, the course of um, my own personal challenges with being bipolar and uh, dealing with uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, um, poetry has really, really, like, you know, been just essential in my life. And I really have a difficult time speaking without speaking in metaphors um, in poetry. It's just like, it, it really is difficult for me to like talk straight if that's, that's the way. And, um, and it, it makes for interesting conversations with me because I'm like always doing stuff there. And, but it, it helped me in my healing. And so during, during my MFA program, my, my thesis, it focuses on writing from in, intrinsic places, writing from within and writing for self care. You know, we create people, we write poems, whatever. It, it's not meant to share all the time. Sometimes you can share with people. Some, you don't have to. It's for yourself. You know, it's like, boom, get it out or whatever. And so, yeah, I think it, it's very transformative. And um, I understand the, the power of, <laughs> of spoken word until 2018 when I went to the city assembly when we was campaigning the, um, the no on um, Prop 1. And I went in there and said, oh, okay, I only got three minutes. So I was like, so I went into like this three minute like spoken word piece I have, you know, about we why we don't need the, the you know this proposition, you know, and yeah, and for, since then it's like wow, this really does like have some political you know implications here, and I and I use it a lot and I employ it a lot and everything, and it just to, to be here and share poetry with my friends is just really awesome. Share it with the community and world. Yeah, I want to encourage everyone to read, you know, really write, 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 write poetry, write, write, write on is what I'd be saying sometimes. I mean, poetry is therapeutic. It can help you get through some things. Does anyone have any uh, more to add to the conversation? Um, I, I will uh, share something that uh, was written by Entesake Shange if we don't to, to end this up. It was just something that I um, actually had inserted into um, a program for the show that I directed, but um, she, um, at the end, she says, I'm on the other side of the rainbow, picking up the pieces of days spent, waiting for the poem to be heard. While you listen, I have other work to do. And I have a feeling Ms. Mahogany, is in that same vein. Actually, somebody uh, posted, is poetry your second language? It is my first language. <laughs> <laughs> it really it really is. It's got me into trouble sometimes, too, in, in personal relationships. Like, what are you talking about? And why do you sound like you love me? I was like, well, it's just poetry. It's just the way my words come out. Like, don't don't take it too far, you know. What I'm saying I'm not telling you too much. It just this is the way I talk, the way I express, and you know I get through through the day like with you know metaphors and and similes and oh my gosh, broken sentences and stanzas. Those are just great, you know. What I'm saying like you don't get no better than that. Like what other way yeah, is there to talk? Yeah. May you know? So I guess you can do some love making if you wanted to. But yeah. Poetry is where it's at for me. <laughs> Yeah. That's what I love about your work, though. That um, you're seeing you you love wordplay as well. Mm -hmm. There's so many double entendres, and and you really. Um, I was as I was reading through your Shiro uh, book. Um, I love the way you've pulled a lot of your work together, and and the the fact that you even. Uh, deconstructed. Um, I'm, I'm trying to remember the poem, uh, the name of the poem, but how you deconstructed your process, even of right. writing, is so amazing to me. Yeah, I gotta go back and read some of those things because you know it's like 
he do so much, he writes so much, and like, okay, I don't remember writing it. And that's what the, the cool thing about this piece, too, is like hearing other people, you know, read these words and perform these words, like, wow, I wrote that. That I, okay, that was cool. I can get with that, you know. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah, you know, must apply lotion. Mm -hmm. So um, it just it's just really profound. And like we were sitting here watching the film, and you know, Annis is like going to just reciting these these lines and stuff, mm -hmm. you know. And I know from being in theater myself how cool it is when you're a part of a production and you've been rehearsing. And so you got all these like lines that you remember like in forever in a day. Yeah. They don't go nowhere. It just come out of nowhere. Like undeniable, the good life, you know, right. it, just, it, comes. it just comes out. And uh, it's just really cool. Or my favorite, nasty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the nasty woman. Oh. <laughs> I had fun with that word, so. <laughs> yeah, she did. She did. And I, I mean, like, I'm really grateful that Nikki is assistant director. And uh, pretty much, I mean, I, I, if, if Annis had the time off work and all that kind of stuff, she would definitely be, like, right up here, too, in terms of the administrative type of thing. Mm -hmm. But if nothing else, it's like, you talk about, like, you know, moral support. You talk about friendship. You talk about encouragement. Um Annis has really been there uh, for me time and time again. And just like a couple of weeks ago, she cooked for me for the first time ever. And if you don't mind me sharing oh, the reason, you can share the the story. reason yeah, the reason why it's so profound, it's like she's wheelchair bound, right? So she can't really cook in her kitchen. So I cook and make. And, um, but she knew I was like, you know, had hit a state of depression and was like really, really low and stuff and so she she cooked you know she went once and stuff up in the microwave for me and like brought it back I was like, <laughs> oh my god it's the best meal ever because she cooked it for me you yeah, know yeah. it wasn't DoorDash ordered or anything like that i think it was just a little soup or something but yeah man that was the best soup ever and you know in the history of the soups yeah. <laughs> just beautiful and so it's just like having love and support like this you know and we're we, we are deep in a pandemic now. We are a year into this thing. Mm -hmm. And even more so, I think right before I went to bed, I was like, you know, we really did a good job, you know, at the quarantine sister circle. And at a time when the planet needs us, the world needs us the most, the heart of this pandemic, deep into it. And here we come with love, compassion, empathy, humor, mm -hmm. like in artistry, just... Yeah, it'll get no better than that. That's well, we just leave it up to the women to do that anyway. I mean, it's right, right, our right. nature. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Any parting thoughts, anyone? Okay, I'm going to get set up. Real quick. I just want to say thank you to Mahogany for um, trusting uh her process and her thoughts and her words to uh and, and lend them to us, uh, it was an honor, and we were extremely humbled to uh, to carry the weight of of them, um, and to hopefully release any burdens out into the world, um, and just bring back the positivity and love that she deserves. So, thank you, thank you so much. And I I just wanted to say to everyone, it's been an honor, it's been a privilege, it's been an amazing experience. And I hope that we gather together again and create something else awesome because we rock, you know, and I hope you all know that. And I hope you're all proud of the work and of what we've done together because they're, they're just sometimes there just aren't words to explain or express how amazing a job is when you get to see the, the finished product. Because like I said, every time I look at it, it gives me goosebumps and just makes me proud of everyone. So there you go. Yeah, I kind of want to piggyback off of what uh, Anna said. I also want to say how grateful I am um, that everybody was able to come together. Um, all the actresses and all the dancers, good job. I wanted to say good job. Um, and I wanted to say thank you for to Mahogany for bringing us together to create something so meaningful. Um, it really, like I just said earlier, really was a blessing, and it was a lot of fun, um, a lot of work, but it was a lot of fun. <laughs> um, and I hope that we can do something like this again. 
I'm going to jump on this train too. Um, <laughs> so humbled to be asked to participate and so grateful to Mahogany to provide the opportunity for connection when it is so easy to isolate yourself mm -hmm. at this time. And for a way, being a dancer, I process through movement. So giving me the platform to process. Um, and it was just an amazing experience. And I can't wait to see what comes next. <laughs> I can't either. <laughs> so I came on at the last minute, but I want to just say um, how amazing everybody did. And yeah, thanks to Mahogany for putting this together. And excellent job, everybody. Fantastic. Snaps, claps. <laughs> uh, thank you all so much. And you know what? I must say the reason why is MC because the MC's job is to create space for others. You know what I'm saying? Create space for voices. That's just my job. It's my responsibility. Otherwise, it'd just be mahogany magnetic, you know? <laughs> but MC mahogany magnetic, I have a job responsibility to create space for others. And I'm just grateful that I did this and best believe when the other opportunities comes, you know, the way I see it is, you know, like when, when I come up, everybody come up around me, we're going to like do this together. And so, um, yeah, so I'm just really, really grateful for you all. And thank you for just like spending this afternoon with us. Um, yeah. And this, you know, premiere, I mean, it's a great opening weekend. Uh, first showing uh, the last day of this show panel discussion. Thank you very much, Vivian. Thank you much cast members and stuff. And so um, I'm gonna go ahead and close this out, but tune in um, to be a part of this all weekend long. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for donating to the quarantine sister circle, which is really, really, uh, really powerful. Uh, because, you know, we, we started out with $2, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so we, we was not going to lose. It's not going to lose with these $2. And um, so I'm just really, really grateful, really honored um, to be here. And I just want to thank you all so much from all four ventricles of my heart. Sorry for the interruption of your regular scheduled program. This was only a test to see if you give a damn about transgressions in your news feed as you scroll down to perceive past atrocities against humanity. A blind eye so you may not see the pearls of a second-class citizen. When you still have analog for best vision, outdated, archaic, played out education, new day, same funky basic situation, getting down on the most basic human level. Don't swipe left. I become disheveled. It's on the test to see if you give a damn. Now, back to your regular scheduled program. <laughs>